There we go. Hey, Dustin, just because I can see you, can you give me a th thumbs up that you can hear? Cool. Okay. Uh, thanks, Dahlia. So what we're going to do today, this is the Crush It call for, I think it's October 25th. Um, I'm guessing anyway. So what we're going to do today really quickly is we are going to go over a couple things, especially because there's so many new people on here, as far as objections go. Um, we're going to do a couple things. We're going to talk about objections and then we're going to do a little bit of problem solving at the end, thanks to some of the diamond coaches on this team. So what we're going to talk about briefly is this is actually a great document that I got from Mark and Natasha, um, from again, another coach that really goes through some objections and what it'll do hopefully is give some of you guys some an idea of exactly how you can best tackle it because i know everybody gets objections um we're going to talk a little bit deeper as far as um uh why some people might get more than others but before we do that let's jump in really quickly to any um shout outs uh that anybody might have for anybody on the team oh there you go. That was quick, Elda. You go. I got my hand up. Um, I want to shout out Alethea because she just had her first team retreat in Utah last weekend. Mm. And it was amazing. She had some great speakers there, great team building projects. Um, we finished it off with Chris Downing. It was just such a fantastic weekend and she did such a fantastic job. So I wanted to shout her up. Wow, that's very cool. Any, did any Canadians make it or was it, was it this like a U.S. a U.S. retreat? Well, I'm Canadian. Well, I know, but you're a transplant. I'm Canadian. Okay. I'm there was, there was one Canadian in there. Cool. Yeah, everyone else was U.S. That's awesome. Um, any other shout outs before we get into this? One. Yeah. Go ahead, Sue. I just wanted to congratulate Erna. <coughs> Josiah Davis, who's my brand new coach who came became Emerald within one week of signing up. And I'm just so proud of her. So if she's on, way to go, girl, you rock. That's awesome. I love it when people go fast out of the gate. Not everybody has to. Not everybody has to. Um, but it's cool when that happens. So congrats. Anyone else while we're at it? Do, do, do. No, I'm going to take a quick picture while everybody's on here in case anybody wants to do a shout out. No. Okay. I'm going to do one real quick. Um, I don't think, I think Melinda's in parent teacher interviews. Um, so congrats to Melissa uh, Greck for going Emerald as well today. Congrats to you. That's awesome. Um, again, some people do it fast. Some people it takes a little bit longer. Um, but as long as you're moving forward, right? And for the brand new people who might be, it might be their first call, don't worry, Emerald's really simple. It basically means you have two people that you have either signed up as a coach or what we call a discount coach. So you'll get there. Um, any other quick shout outs while we're at it? No? Going once, going twice. Okay. Let's get into this. So objections, um, we all get them. New coaches get them more than veteran coaches, but veteran coaches still get them. New coaches always get the, and I put your hand up. I can, I can see one, two, three, five, 10, 10, 25 of you. Put your hand up if you're new or when you're new, you got the, do I have to do the Shakeology part? Yeah. Okay, a lot of people get that. Ironically, the longer you do this, you don't really hear it that much anymore. I know for myself, I got it more at the beginning, but I, you don't hear it as much. You, you still hear it, but those are types of objections that start to fade. And the reason they start to fade is I'm gonna give you one blunt, um, keeping it real moment. Oh, Sarah got it, cool. Keeping it real moment is for people who've been doing this a long time and showing up every single day for three years, 
people tend to trust you more. They start to trust you a little bit more. You have a little bit more street cred or social media cred, whatever you want to call it. But I've been showing it on my Insta stories since Insta stories were around. I've been showing people how to make it for three and a half years now. People know now that it's something that I do and it's part of my program without me even bringing it up. So yes, it still happens, but people who are on one day might not post the next day, might show a workout the next day, wait a week, come back again, do something, you know, fitness that doesn't include their kids anymore. Those are people who are probably going to get a heck of a lot more objections, right? Because people don't necessarily always see this as a viable business or that you are building something that they can join, right? So that's my first tip to get past objections is to get on here and be consistent and don't just post for the sake of posting. Um, actually be, you know, post about what we do, post about what you do, post about how this has changed you. And the, after I show you all these objections in the, in the scripts, the best thing you can do and what the top coaches will do is in their posts, if you've got a Shakeology objection, your next post should be answering that objection. That's the easiest way to do it. If you get price objections, talk about, talk about the objection in your post, right? Explain the value of this. Explain what you used to buy and what you used to pay at the gym and how amazing what this new system is, right? The easiest way to answer objections is to actually squash them out before they even come up, right? Um, sorry, I was going to go check that too. Uh, their eyes are, yeah. So, and again, no, I, I always say sometimes also no just means not right now. So don't give up. Um, a lot of us who've been doing this a long time, we will have people who a year, I just got one today, ironically, I had no idea who the person was who gave me their email um, and their flavor. And I was like, I don't even know who this person is. It was like a customer fell from heaven, but it was from To Be Mindset in, was that March or May? Um, that I had sent the link to, hadn't really talked to them. I'd followed up once in between then. So don't be discouraged. It's going to happen. Okay. It will come, but it comes with consistency. So I'm going to show you. We'll get right to the meat because these are really good. Elda, can you see that? Cool. Okay, can you see that still, Elda? Sorry, when I make a big screen, cool. Okay, so objections are normal. We do all get them. Sarah Davidson, rock star, got two today, right? So they do happen, but they do decrease once you have been doing this a while and are, are you know, consistent with your posting. They're going to happen. They're going to happen whether you are a 15-star diamond or a brand new coach starting today. Um, it's human nature. It's actually psychological. Um, it's like a proven defense mechanism. The human body wants, wants to avoid stress. It does. So anything new, anything different, anything that puts us out of our comfort zone, the human body actually tries to stay right here. And so when you're doing something different or if it, if it causes anxiety or stress for somebody, it's actually a defense mechanism to have objections. That's the mind trying to keep you from any kind of stress, right? And this kind of stress, the, you know, the stress of exercising or the stress of eating healthier, those are still stresses in people's minds, right? That they're going to have to change. Um, something everybody gets, we all get them. We all get them. And again, definitely not a no. Um, an objection is sometimes somebody just wanting to be reassured, right? It's a big step for a lot of people. So sometimes it's just them needing you to calm their fears, right? Um, and for all of us, definitely a learning experience. Hopefully these things um, will give you some tools. I'm gonna put the actual, don't take notes. I'll put this actual file up in the Crush It and uh, you guys can share it to your own teams afterwards so that you can, you can go back to this. And I'm not gonna read all of them because there's a ton of them, but they're very, very good. 
and again, it's just, it's just an objection. That's all it is. Don't take it personally. Um, these are literally just objections. Um, I don't think, I wonder if I'm going to be able to do it this way. Yeah. Okay. The first one, um, I don't have the money and don't worry, I'm not going to read all of these, right? I'm just going to go through, I'll read, I'll read the first one. For example, I don't have the money. What you want to do, and depending on who you've been talking to, um, breaking down the cost is the first one. Ah, you're in luck. This month, the program is on special. It's only $160 for the bundle pack. And that's where when we have those graphics that we'll explain, typically it's $99 for, uh, this is American, $99 for BOD, $130 for um, Shakeology, your color coded containers, access to the group. I mean, luckily for you, this month it's on sale. So it's a perfect month to join. That's the type of you know, reassurance that someone needs. Sounds great, but I don't have the money right now. Um, a lot of what we do is the feel felt found, right? I used to feel the same way. I felt this way, but what I found was, and if you use that, especially with number two, a lot of people will start to relate to you, right? As opposed to you actually selling them something, it shows that you're empathizing with somebody's situation, right? Um, worst case scenario. Uh, also when I first started, I gave myself a time limit to see how this works. I really like this one. And I said, okay, if it doesn't work out in three months, I'm gonna cancel free of charge. And the worst thing that'll have happened is that I've got a good life-changing experience, a program to keep, and I tried a new superfood shake and got a little healthier. Not the worst thing, right? And that's how you can relate it to yourself, how for you, you may have started. Sorry, ignore the purple squiggle. Um, so, so that's a perfect example of something where you need to explain to them that you understand how they feel, right? The 30 day money back guarantee is a perfect one. I often say, what is the absolute worst case scenario with this? The absolute worst case scenario is 30 days from now, you're right back to where you started. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. Okay. For the money ones. And then again, use the priorities and the comparisons of, you know, this is what I used to pay money on. This is what I found now that I've done this. I don't feel the need to do my lattes or whatever, whatever the, the reason is. But the, these are five very good ones that you can use. Again, I wouldn't necessarily copy and paste these. Make sure you put this in your own language. Okay. So that's, I don't have the money. Um, do I have to get the shake? We all get this from time to time. Um, and honestly, for people now, at the beginning, a lot of us would let people in if it was just bod. Now that once you're a little bit more established, people have two frames of mind. I still let people in if they're not on Shakeology. However, I'm very blunt with them. Um, and if, if I've exhausted every objection discussion, um, but I express to them how important it is to the program, and I let them know that when it comes up, I can't have you coming in the group saying, well, I'm not on Shakeology because that's kind of like going to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and you're saying, well, I'm actually still having a drink here and there, but I can still do this, right? So I have that heart to heart with people who aren't on Shakeology and explain that to them. To me, I still want to help people. And when we first started, selling bot is a victory. That's a win for a lot of people, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a challenge pack. But here's, here's an example um, of, a, of a great script for uh, do I have to get the shake? Technically, you can just pay the $40 sign-up fee in Canada, it's $60. But honestly, it really isn't worth you. Oh, sorry. Um, it, if you're not, if, and this is for coaching, for example, if you're not going to be drinking Shakeology, to be, to be a successful coach, you need to believe in the products. Uh, most people need help with fitness and nutrition. So again, this is often a tangent. This is when you're talking to a coach because if you ever talk to a lot of, and I'm not going to, I'm not trying to insult personal trainers who are on here, but a lot of personal trainers want to be coaches, but don't necessarily want to be invested in the whole program. That's been my experience. Um, and that's usually their biggest struggle is understanding that this is a package, right? The Shakeology, and it's the same with the customers. Um, 
the Shakeology, the fitness, and being part of the accountability group is part of the entire program. And the longer you do this, the more confident you're actually gonna feel about this, right? Um, and one of the reasons that I used to use, and you can use this one, I don't think it's on here, is for a lot of us, this is a referral business. So I'll tell somebody is, I'd love to have you in the group, and I understand you don't wanna be in Shakeology. However, the people who get best results on this program are the people who are doing a program who are on Shakeology and who are in the accountability group. And because this is my business that provides income for my family and a large part of it is a referral business, I need people to get the best results possible and that includes Shakeology, okay? So that's one that you might wanna, wanna bring up. You can see number three also, people will say, well, I don't wanna weight loss shake. And I'm like, if, if this is a shake that's making you lose weight, then you're doing it wrong, okay, to me. That's not what Shakeology is. It's not a protein shake and it's not a weight loss shake, right? And that's usually most people's resistance is they've seen something like, I always forget, what's the really big one? Um, um, what's the, not Herbalife, Isogenics. Isogenics, yeah. Isogenics is a big one and they force you to drink two of those a day plus some pills to lose weight. I tell people you can use Shakeology to gain weight or lose weight, depending you know, on what else you're doing on the side. But the reason we do it is for the dense dose of nutrition. I'm a bit of a science geek, and I even get into things like carrots. Nowadays have about one-tenth the zinc that they used to have. So even if you're eating you know, organic carrots all day long, you're still missing out, and that's what Shakeology does for me. Okay. Um, and then it's also the, the best deal, right? Especially if somebody wanted to be a coach and get bod, they almost get Shakeology for free, right? If they're not going to get a challenge pack. So there's some good ones, hopefully, for the shake objection that a lot of you get. Sorry, one sec. Uh, do I still have to? Yeah, there's the addition. I already have a protein shake. And then, but I'm pregnant or breastfeeding. Don't take my advice from it. But if you go into your back office, um, there is actually a dear doctor letter that you can take to your doctor if somebody is pregnant or breastfeeding. I can't say I took it while I was pregnant or breastfeeding, um, but I know you can use people in your group as an example, or definitely take them that letter and have them take that letter to their doctor or their OB if if that makes you feel better. There is one on there where they can take the ingredients to, uh, to a doctor. Uh, I wouldn't be a good coach. Unfortunately, a lot of people have this when you're trying to talk to somebody about coaching. Um, I'm not at my goal weight. I'm not a salesperson and I'm in a small town. The, sm the last one, ironically, we hear a lot of is I don't have a lot of people on my friends list and I live in a town of 500 people. It's really imperative that you let them know that most of the people they're gonna sign up won't be from your town, right? It has absolutely nothing to do with it. Um, I would imagine most of the people, again, I'm gonna pick on Elda because I can see her, but most of the people Elda or myself are signing up, I don't know where most of them live. And so like this last lady who sent me her information, I had to go on Facebook and find out whether she lived in Canada or the US because I was almost embarrassed to ask her after she'd given me that information because it went so fast. So most of the people, hopefully through social media, and that's where you have to explain the beauty of this business is it doesn't matter where you live. That's the cool part. You can, that's why this is such a great opportunity is you can live in a town of 300 people and sign up people from New York City. That's the best part about this, right? So those are amazing ones um, as far as I wouldn't be a good coach. That one we don't get as much, but there's some great examples for you there. Um, someone read your message, commented, and then didn't answer you. Um, we, I call that ghosting. I don't know if people still call that ghosting, um, but for myself, and I don't know what other veteran coaches do, but I will follow up probably two times. And after that, 
it's a very easy one. And I think it's close to number six is, hey, not trying to hound you. Um, but you can say, let me know if you want me to take you off my list of contact people um, because I don't want to bother you. Doesn't mean you have to join right now, but let me know if you want me to take you off my list for our next special group. Most people don't want to be taken off a list for anything um, unless it's somebody who's irritatingly calling you. But after two or three times, I think that's a great one to leave with people is, hey, um, in case we have another free group coming up or in case there's an amazing special, did you want me to take you off our list? That's a, that's a fantastic one. There's some amazing ones on here as well, seven of them. Um, and there's one other one that I'll share with you guys after this that uh, uh, Natasha shared with me that's just fantastic. So that's those. I, again, I don't want to read all of these to you guys just because there's so many. Um, I understand social media and I don't want to post on Facebook. So we're going back to the coach post, right? Um, please note that I am an older male. This is for me as well, not what I had wanted to do. Um, as far as posting on social media. Um, and I think people get a bit of the wrong impression with it, especially people who are already posting um, and don't really realize that they're coaching. Then they come up with this excuse of, you know, I don't want to do this or what will my friends think? Um, but for most of us, all I tell people is, and this relates back to some of the previous objections of, I, I don't want to be a salesperson. I honestly don't feel like a salesperson on Facebook. Um, if you are, I think you're doing it wrong. If you're being too salesy, what I think the best thing that you can do through these objections, as far as what will my friends think, um, is you're, all you're doing is sharing the positive parts of your life and, the, and some of the scary parts. Again, don't think you have to be perfect on here. Um, we were talking amongst our team earlier and some of the best posts um, like Rachel, I'll use her as an example. Some of the best posts that she gets traction and customers from is when she's so far from perfect, it's not funny, right? So all you want to do is, is calm their fears that you're not on there to sell. All you're doing on there is sharing, you know, what's working for you without, if, if every post you're doing is come join my group, come join my group, then you really are doing that wrong. Okay. So there's three great ones. Um, Grasping at straw excuses. So a lot of the time this is, and this is one of the first things I'd mentioned, is people's limiting beliefs, right? Um, a lot of it comes down to them trying to protect themselves. Um, it has nothing to do with the opportunity, right? Um, for someone like Jamie and Kim, for example, they, they still get turned down a lot. Um, and if someone has a story like theirs and they get into the details of how they did it and how well they're doing, you got to be kind of crazy not to sign up, but people still don't. So a lot of those are people's own limiting beliefs. And that's where you're going to have to break these down. My biggest one, and I think I've written five posts about this is when somebody says, I'll have to ask my husband. That drives me bonkers, but it happens. Um, and then that's where, this is a great one. I'm going to read this one to you. Oops, sorry. Let me see if I can get back. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Ask your husband. I want you to share with him everything you've just told me about why you want to join and why it would mean so much to you, right? And if it helps him, let him know that there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. And I love leaving every objection response with an answerable question, such as, do you know a time when you'll talk to him? And you can even say, because I'd love to follow you up, follow up with you after that and see how it went. Okay. So it kind of puts a little bit more emphasis on them to make the move to talk to the husband. But I also really like the fact that we threw in there, make sure you let him know how much this means to you. Because if anybody, and I've, I've never quite understood, but if you really explain to your significant other why this is important to you and what this is going to bring you, it's a pretty mean person to, to stop you from doing this. So hopefully some of these will work. Um, next one. And again, I'm going to put the file up here, so don't worry about these. 
Um, again, objections are part of your job. Start tackling them publicly. This is the thing I said right at the beginning um, because the people are watching you. Um, and this isn't just for the responses that you're getting. I would actually take this document and take all the objections and do one post a week, every week, for example, about the shake or about the social media or, or about the self-confidence and do one post a week each week about each topic. And every month that gives you five amazing posts to talk about. And every month I would do the same thing and change it up, right? Do at least one Shakeology objection post a month. And it doesn't have to be salesy. Um, a lot of us don't use the word, um, don't use the word Shakeology. Uh, a lot of us don't even use the word beach body. So, um, you might want to talk about your superfoods or if you're talking about something else, um, you know, keep it, keep it non salesy in your objection post, but, um, definitely you want to bring those out in a public way. Sorry. One sec. Um, and tell your story and evoke emotion. Again, that's what the really good coaches are doing is they're not just being robots on there showing themselves working out every week. They're, they're showing the pain points that they went through to get to where they are now so that they are relatable to other people. Um, I'm just going to check questions. No questions. Anybody have any questions right now so I can take a break and drink my water? No. Okay. Quiet crowd tonight. Um, what I'm going to do now is I want to go through something. We did a little exercise today with some of the diamonds and we were talking um, earlier. I think uh, Carla, myself and Natasha met briefly at a Starbucks and we were talking about the cycles of this business. Um, not always up here, right? Um, I know for myself, and sometimes it feels good to hear this from other people. I know for myself, um, the first year I did this, I think every 30 days, I felt like I wasn't good at this and I wanted to quit. Um, I still get that way sometimes. I still feel like uh, I'm just not good. I'm not made to do this. Um, so that feeling is normal. Um, the abnormal part is when you stay there, is when you stay in that feeling and you don't know how to get out of it. So for all of you new people or people who've been doing this a couple months, it, I know a lot, of, a lot of this is always like, you know, here's the tactics to be successful. Well, what if you're doing the tactics and right off the bat, you're not successful, right? Because that does happen. So I'm just actually gonna read to you um, and you might want to take the recording from this because um, I'm literally just going to read all these amazing examples that the Diamond Coaches um, mentioned today. And I'm going to tell you who they were. Okay. And this is what some of the top coaches on this team do when they're feeling, you know, maybe not like a rock star or they're having, I hate saying it's a slow month. I, because I don't know. There's no real slow seasons. There's busier seasons, but there's not necessarily slow seasons. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of um, us not showing up or not feeling like we're showing up. So here's some, this one's Jacqueline's. She says, I make a schedule. I hammer out a time for Instagram and Facebook separately. And that's straight from the top. Melanie Mitro has always said this. You have to make a schedule. She turns off all notifications and as a new coach, you don't want to miss anything, right? We almost answer people back too quickly, like to, oh my God, someone answered me. I got to get back right now, right? And if there's a ding, it's like, there's a ding on my phone. There's a ding on my phone. Who is it? So when you are working, turn off your notifications. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but you can. Um, so that when you're on a platform like Instagram or you're doing Instagram, you're not getting bombarded by PMs, by Facebook notifications, by by, you know, text messages from your kids. Um, 
And that way you feel less overwhelmed and you can accomplish tasks without being distracted by dings and all the emails and messengers. So that's the number one thing you can do, especially for most of us who still do this. This isn't our full-time gig, right? We don't have massive amounts of time to do this. We're doing this in pockets. So when you are spending an hour doing this, don't do this. Set your time, set your schedule, literally to the, to the point of five minutes to do this, 10 minutes to do this. Trust me, you'll be so much more efficient and turn off your notifications. Okay, that was from Jacqueline. That was a great idea. Um, Cami was gratitude and positive affirmations. Even 30 seconds of gratitude in the morning. If you haven't watched Lewis Howes, he's huge. Most people are huge. Any successful person does gratitude every morning. I guarantee you from Tony Robbins to Gary Vaynerchuk to Shailene Johnson to, to uh, Lewis Howes to anybody, uh, Rachel Hollis, I guarantee you they all do both affirmations and gratitude first thing in the morning. It's amazing how much that can change your day, right? So that's the big one. Um, because when you're in that right place, she says, my challengers and other people want to join as well. You're going to put that out there to people, right? How you doing, Erica? <laughs> I see you're, you're readjusting your belly there. Um, uh, this was from Christine. She says, I actually take a break from inviting and focus on her challengers and her discount coaches, right? Because that's going to fill you up. That's for most of us who are running challenge groups. That's what fills you up. You go in and you help one of your challengers. How are you going to feel down, right? Like, how are you going to feel down after that? Um, and when I feel they're jazzed up, it gets the conversation flowing. And then that shows up in other parts of her business. Um, she also teaches classes and she gets a lot out of that. Um, but she says, sometimes I literally will have to take a mental break, turn off my phone for an hour. Um, and it, to quote, it's also saved me from losing my mind. So nothing wrong with that. But again, these are small little turnoffs, right? So if you are feeling that way, dive into your challengers, show some love, help somebody that can't help but give you some energy, right? Um, doo -doo -doo. Binge watching. No, we're not going to do that one. Um, oh, this is a long one from Rebecca. That's an easy one for me. Um, every day I make sure I do my non-negotiables. And that way she says, I don't, I feel like a winner. And this is just doing the easy things. Water, nutrition, fitness, five minutes of gratitude, shocker, um, and listening to a leadership podcast. That's how she starts her day. It's hard to feel down if you feel like a success before you've even, you know, left the house, right? So that's part of it. Again, being a product of the product with this. If you're not doing a program every single morning, getting your water in, having your shake, doing your exercise, those are like three easy wins for the day, right? Those aren't hard. Well, fitness can be hard for some of us, but that those are three easy wins, right? Um, sorry. Uh, and she also writes down thoughts she had of herself six months ago versus how she feels now. And for a lot of you who have started off in a program, um, don't forget where you started from a fitness perspective, right? You're just starting your business journey. This is a totally different journey, but look at how far some of you have come. Um, uh, da, da, da. Sorry. Um, uh, from Sarah, this was a good one too. Uh, for her to get refocused and look back when, uh, on when she had a great week or month and see what she was doing or a great day. And that's a good example because I think for most of us, if we did that, if we're having a tough day or week or month or season, um, if we looked back to when we were like really on fire, it's probably because we we're a lot more organized. We we're showing up consistently. We we're eating healthier and we we're getting our workouts in, right? That's generally, I find for myself, I'm a better coach. I post better. I attract more challengers when I am on fire personally from a, from a health and wellness perspective, right? So that's something that Sarah does. Um, and then she also switches her personal development to more leadership slash business mindset, uh, personal development 
or podcasts. And that's one, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't understand why everybody doesn't do that one because it's the easiest, especially podcasts. And I would guess this is a 50-50 crowd and it's a pretty good crowd, but I would guess it's a 50-50. I'm not gonna make you raise your hand, don't worry. I would guess it's a 50-50 crowd on personal development. It's one, it's like water. Two things that are probably the easiest to do that most of us slip on, right? Put your hand up, me too, water. Um, yeah, hey, at least one person did. Thank you, Misty. Um, didn't leave me hanging. So, um, and sorry, I'm gonna switch to Natasha here. What she does, and this is a great technique for everybody, is find a success partner. If you need help, speak to your upline if you feel like you want one. So what she, her and Jacqueline Ettinger are success partners. So she says, I talk to her right away. I throw ideas around and explain to her why I'm feeling a certain way. We sit down and have a power hour together. And that, she says, is such an easy way to do it. And that's kind of, um, it's funny, Natasha and Carla and I, just randomly have met at Starbucks a couple of times and even just sitting down talking to other people, it's like you do an emotional slap in the face. You know, it's like, wake the hell up. It's like, you, you know, you're amazing at this. Um, here's what you should do because sometimes it's easier to hear it from a friend slash colleague than your upline. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a success partner from another team that's not on your team. So they might have different strategies to share with you, um, but it's a great idea. You want to find somebody who's kind of similar to you and at the same point in their business to you. And it can be a great push because yes, we have these calls every Thursday. Yes, you can PM any of us at any time, but to have that person, like the other connection to talk through, that is massive. So if you need one, definitely reach out. Um, Rachel, game changer. I like this one. Rachel's uh, in total boss mode lately. Um, game changer for me in the last month. <laughs> I like this. I am epic. Like legitimately, don't even bring up Beachbody or products. I am an empire. Join my tribe because I'm kind of a big deal, right? That's a mindset, but that's, that's a switch. And Rachel's been doing this for almost three years, right? And she's had she's been a rock star the whole time, but she's had this switch and it's, it's like these, I don't know if she's on here, if I'm talking about her, she's not here, but um, it's like, she keeps having these steps that she keeps taking. And this has been another one. Um, Cause I'm kind of a big deal, not to toot my own horn, but to never underestimate what you have to offer people. And again, that's where those objections come in, right? If you don't value what you have to offer. And this is her word, something switched in my head last week. And this week, everyone I touch bases with is completing purchases. And that's that mindset thing, right? It's people feel that. And I guarantee you, she's getting way less objections when she's in that I am epic mode, right? So if you can steal anything from Rachel, um, maybe do those affirmations in your head before you start writing a post. It's like, you know what? what I'm doing is pretty effing amazing and I have a lot to offer somebody. So you're nuts if you don't want to join this, right? If you went into that as opposed to, Oh, I'm going to hit send now. Oh, oh, I just hit return. Oh my God. I just put it out there. What am I going to do? Oh my God. I hope nobody sees it. I'm going to delete it. Right. That's not, we've all done that, but that's not going to get you people. That's not going to attract people to you. You have to do those affirmations. Um, like Rachel had mentioned there is like, I am epic. You're lucky to join my group, right? That's the, those are the affirmations you should be doing either in the morning after your gratitude or maybe before you're about to post and maybe it'll, you know, kick up your inner Rachel. Um, Carla was, she resets on her why um, and gets her eyes off of numbers and back onto people. And I think Kim had posted something about that in the Crush It group. Um, as far as it's not about the likes, it doesn't matter if you get 200 likes on a post, but you're not connecting back with anybody personally. It's irrelevant. It is how many likes or how many follows you have. 
it's irrelevant if you're not making connections. And for her, hopefully you've all done a why. It's deep. It's not just, oh, for my kids and so I can feel better. Um, hopefully it's deep. And if you need to connect with that or go back to it, that's a great way to get re-inspired, right? Why am I even doing this? Oh, right. That's why I'm doing this, right? And again, we all, we all get there to some degree. Not everybody. But uh, Sarah, for me, I go back to posts from weeks or months ago and I have a look at who is commenting and liking and she just sends a whack of messages and sends love out to people. She will go back to all those people, comment on their posts, like on their stuff. And again, because a lot of us forget to do that, um, it just starts re-engaging people into her business because sometimes we get so fixated on the perfect picture or writing the perfect post or the perfect invite or that we're, we, we stop connecting with people. And that's what this is all about, right? Um, I think that was it, but I thought those were amazing. Anyone have anything else they want to add to that while you're here? No? I know, that's a bold one. I have one thing. Yes. Um, something that I haven't done in a while, but I used to do was anytime I'd get a, a text or a call or something from a challenger saying, Hey, guess what? I fit in a coat that I couldn't zip up last year. Or, you know, since August, I've lost 27 pounds on 2B mindset. Those are two that I got yesterday and I haven't done this yet, but writing them on a little sticky note or writing them in one place and posting that on your wall or your bulletin board or wherever. And so when you have those days where you're down and you're like, why the heck am I doing this? Well, remember if you weren't doing it, that person would probably be 27 pounds heavier and feeling like she was, you know, in the summertime. So you are making a difference and those are concrete reminders of why we're doing this. Exactly. And that kind of goes back to, especially as new coaches, maybe letting people in who don't just do, you know, don't purchase an entire challenge pack because some people have grown their businesses just with BOD and then people come in and they see all these people with Shakeology and it's like, what is this thing that you're doing? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be an all or nothing, especially as a new person. Sometimes beggars can't be choosers. Um, but having those moments, like Alethea said, that that can change your day or your week. I mean, when you get those, it's like, I, I get paid to do this. Um, it totally changes your mindset. So um, that's all I have on that. I just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Again, please go through the, um, the actual objection posts. There's a lot of good ones there. I just, as a former teacher, I can't stand when people put stuff up on a screen and read it word for word. So I didn't want to do that. Um, so please take a look at them, especially if you're new, some of those hopefully will give you a bit more confidence and some ammunition, but again, put it in your own words. I think there's some eeks and stuff in that. So I'm, I'm, I obviously have to change that for a male. Um, but try and put it into your own words. Um, but there's some, there's some amazing ones. Some are coach, uh, coach focused, some are challenger focused. Um, that was it. Any questions not related to this? Because I know we don't often have time for Q and A. Could be anything. I always say, I always joke. When we first had tiny a tiny team, we used to say who's going to stay on here the longest. Sometimes we'd go to like eleven o'clock, and there'd be two people, and they'd be like, "No, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. You leave first. But that was when, yeah, long time ago. Thanks, Jack. Any other questions? No. Y'all just want to sit here and stare at each other. I'm going to stop the recording anyway.